Good afternoon, I'm Ramon Romero, and I shall talk to you about the importance of primary sources in order to fundament or base future research. And as we're ready to conclude, I would like to say that the international brigades nowadays are still a topic that is uh, really studied and analyzed in, in the scholarship. 80 years after the retirement, actually today, every year we see a great deal of publications which, uh, furthermore, many of them actually deal with uh, less known aspects or they even open new lines of research. Also, it has been proven that a great deal of society is still interested on uh, by this topic because we have a numerous group of institutions and associations that are devoted to the study and analysis and rendering homage, homage also of uh, the brigaders. Also, young scholars like myself have decided that whenever we finish our studies, we want to devote our research on the international brigades. And personally, the reasons that led me study this topic is, first of all, it's history, because I believe it's amazing. You know, volunteers were a clear example of solidarity and uh, compromise with their own values, because they were both men and women from more than 50 countries and different social and political origins who left their homes and risked their lives to fight fascism, defending their ideals. Again, personally, the topic that I believe more in, most interesting is the control and purges. Because I realized that many people were actually uh, denouncing these facts. And there is a huge lack of information on this specific topic if we compare it with other different issues uh, being well known. Why has it, ha have we shared some silence because there's a huge lack of documentation which allows us to work um, in a secure way or in a safe way, but again, it's a less kind aspect of the brigades. There are some researchers who have proven that, yes, it is possible uh, to do so thanks to the use of primary sources. There have been thus a few researchers who have used uh, the opportunity, taken, sorry, the opportunity uh, to use these newly opened archives and use this material and carry on on this research that seemed to be to have stopped. So they have received a great uh, re reconnaissance and welcome in the academic world. From Sidrim, again, primary sources are used, primarily the Moscow, archi Moscow archives. And we have information on many volunteers, and we believe there is no more information we can gather on them. And even we have no notion or no idea of their existence, but thanks to Radaski, we can uh, make this database even more comprehensive. So thanks to both this researcher and uh, the anonymous, sorry, the primary sources, we can gather more information on anonymous volunteers. I'll give you a few examples that prove that using archives allows us to advance a great deal. Before Citrim, we only had two volunteers uh, from Albania, and now we have 44. And another nice example is the fact that we discovered a, 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 an Albanese, um, Albanian sorry, volunteer who came on a boat and near Malgrat da Mar, just a, a beach town near Barcelona, 
it was interesting to tell them that we had found about this uh, volunteer figure. They didn't have information, so the seat, uh, the, um, the boat uh, responsible, actually, the, the company, could include his name on the list of passengers. Another example, a German volunteer not long ago, his grandson asked Lourdes if we could help him find his granddad because he was a volunteer who died during the war, in theory, but they have never found his remains. So he asked us whether we could help him to at least gather more information. Uh, the family gave us a few information, the fact that he came from Germany, he went to Albacete, he enrolled the brigades, specifically number 13th in artillery. In Albacete, he met a Spanish woman. They ended up getting married and having a son. And during the war, they settled in Barcelona. When they were here, this German volunteer went to Paris. And what happens is that they tell his woman, while well, he's in theory in Paris, that because he's been killed by a bombing while he was in Barcelona. So this was really uh, untrue because he was in Madrid, so they didn't know he was in Barcelona. So. Having this contradictory information, we started digging and digging uh, for information. And it's not necessary to say that their fam family was uh, searching and searching for a long time on the lists of uh, bombing victims or hospital victims and in order to find uh, his remains in any cemetery. So thanks to primary sources, we looked in a book on German volunteers, and we found this little bibliography on his figure. And it's a little bit confusing, because that might complement the information that the family had so far. It says that he died in Barcelona on the 30th of April, 1938. And not much more, really. This is the very few information we had, really almost nothing. So we see the need of uh, investigating furthermore. Now, primary sources uh, said this, but the Moscow archives and the lists on information on German volunteers, then we identify this person who, as you will see, uh, given the fact it's a family petition, I will not show uh, his name uh, because of uh, respect towards the family. So what we find in the Moscow archives makes us doubt on the official version, because in this fragment, which has been translated, it is dated in 1940. What is surprising us here? Well, first of all, it has been recognized that he was indeed in Paris, and he met the uh, defectors, um, circles, people who had been considered suspicious. Himself, actually, was considered a suspicious agent because it was thought that he worked for the enemy. Also, it's very surprising the fact that when he came back to Barcelona, to Spain, sorry, he was arrested, and in theory, he, were, he died in 1938, but in 1940, in this document, uh, it's stated that we don't know where he is. So again, these puzzle, puzzle pieces don't match, don't fit. So in the many lists of suspicious or people who were considered to be suspicious, we do find him in this document, which I have not translated it because basically the text, the information given is basically the same. And here what I would like to say or highlight is what type of people it's spoken about. In this list, we have uh, Trotskyists, um, uh, spies, poems, members, in parentheses near his um, 
Near his name, there is a possible accusation of being a spy. So these accusations are really serious. It's not the first time we have found him in the list of suspicious uh, individuals. But I would like to highlight that given the great number of lists and reports done on the Moscow archives, we have identified that the control within the brigade was not an isolated phenomenon. There was indeed a sort of great mechanism behind it. And the last time we find this volunteer, this German, in the volunteers, sorry, in the suspects list, it's this document, and here he's being accused. Uh, it's not, it doesn't really clarify, but he's accused here of working for the enemy, being a spy for the Gestapo in Belgium. This is dated of 1940. It doesn't say he died in a bombing in Barcelona or any other information he had, uh, he, the family had before. So the information the family gave us and also secondary sources and also the information we have gathered uh, afterwards from the archives we realize that even though nothing is 100% clarified, this makes us doubt that he actually died in a bombing in Barcelona. His family didn't find them in any of these listings, even though they searched for many years. And being under suspicion, we cannot really say he was a victim of the purges. What's interesting in this exercise, in order to finish, is that after primary sources, we can complement in a great deal all information we had available so far. So archives really allow us to follow much closely what happened to these brigaders. And as many research fellows say, we can advance in some research that was stagnant or that wasn't advancing. So thanks to digitalization, now it is possible to check for archives from your PC. And this really helps the research uh, researchers' task. Even though the partial publication of some archives has allowed us to advance in, in or at least gives us new perspectives on some research issues, in the future, with the publication of many more documents, maybe it will be possible to even further advance and we can maybe state soon that in the archives we can find hidden responses, hidden answers. Thank you very much.